tell as how Lord Feversham did leave five hundred pounds to build a great infirmary in Salisbury from the pen of wood, and willed a hospital two hundred years in age by love and care begotten, and a creed the sick and needy shall not always be forgotten. Ah now, the eighteenth century was surely the start of the age of science, and the first advances in medicine, and it sure needed to be, with the girt plague still a painful memory in recent history, and it seemed like hundreds of mortal diseases just waiting to trip me up, like tuberculosis, syphilis, measles, whooping cough, and in course illnesses like asthma, cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, and your physicians more likely to kill e vast, what with blood and the putting on of leeches and the making up of boluses and powders, life sure were cheap then to the poor folk. The girt endemic disease of thick time were the smallpox, a plague that scarred the face and body with terrible pustules, some folks living with a deformity afterwards, and some folks dying in the latter stages. When it rose to epidemic level, it spread terror and panic afore it. Many noble men acted to build pest houses and hospices for the poor victims, where inoculation or variolation might be carried out to prevent the pox carrying on. In Salisbury, Lord Feversham, one of the Radnor family of Longford, bought land and built a hospital for smallpox patients at Bugmore, where the Friary estate now stands. When Vic Girt Man died in 1763, he left, in his will, the sum of five hundred pounds towards the building of an infirmary in Wiltshire within five years of his death. Well, it was sure needed, but three years later now had been done at all. The money hadn't been claimed or used, so in March of 1766 the town council consulted with the bishop and the lords Pembroke and Radnor on what were best to do. Adverts were put in the local press, and meetings were held of local gentry and tradespeople, resulting in the founding of a general infirmary for Salisbury, for the relief of the sick and lame poor from whatsoever county recommended. That were the gist of it. John Wood, architect of the Royal Crescent in Bath, and who had never designed an hospital before, mark you, were commissioned to design a building for a tight little site they had bought in Vishterton Street. Tenders were invited for 800,000 bricks and all the other materials, and in a few years this girt, rather dull, square brick building were raised next to the River Avon, just about the biggest building in Salisbury that weren't a church. Mainly it were funded by subscription and donation, a certain sub entitled he to recommend patients, like the wealthy folk in a village who subscribed could all do so if there were a serious accident at the farm or such like, and a larger sub entitled he to be a director and vote at the annual committee meetings, and we all know how disorganised a body can be when decisions are made by folk who turn up only once a year, don't we? The firmary were a most impractical building for an hospital, having a tall flight of steps to get into it, and two of the three main wards, Pembroke and Radnor, being upstairs too. Lor, the old porter addies were cut out there, carrying patients from Queensbury Ward thirty feet vertically upwards to the operation room in the roof. Oh, and they wards were enormous and cold too, being twenty feet high, and we only two small fire grates in each one. Outpatients could be admitted by medical examination, but only at a certain time and on a certain day, any other time and the place were shut and mum chance. A charitable, amiable body it were, but it were also a hard-faced institution. But, with the exception of the Royal County Hospital at Winchester, whose pattern they had followed, the Salisbury Firmary were the oldest provincial hospital in southern England, a proud addition to the city, and one which, drew the latter part of the 19th century, would grow to be seen as one of the best run in the country, much loved and much respected.